Good evening. How's everybody doing? Praise the Lord. I'm glad I have an opportunity to come to the house of the Lord and not only praise, worship, fellowship, uh, but also, you know, fellowship with one another, but also just proclaim the good news of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Good news. How many of you are tired of bad news? If you're not, just turn on any news. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. You can, you can get a slided version any way you want it. So just turn on news. But if you go to the Word of God, you can get some, some good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, before we begin, we need to take up the offering. Uh, this it's not necessarily for me. Not, uh, that's weird that I'm taking up, but uh, I think I'll need to, right? I, I don't know. Pastor's not here. He asked if I would come. He is preaching at another church in uh, 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 what? Lexington. I almost said Lindsay. Lexington. He's preaching at a church in Lexington. He asked if I would come come down and preach, and I said absolutely. So before we begin, let's take up the offering. Uh, write your checks to uh, Temple of Praise. Credit cards, just throw them in there. They'll swipe it and give it to you later. Go to the app. Do you have an app? No? We're working on that. Uh, work on an app. Uh, if you have an IOU, make sure you pay it. Uh, if you're going to donate, you know, or give eggs, make sure they're in good cartons. I'm just kidding. You can give, you can give it to the Lord. Amen. Give the first fruits and, and let the Lord bless you. Let's pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to come before you and fellowship one with another and most of all to praise you and to give you glory for all things. Lord, we are blessed beyond measure. You have blessed us with the opportunity to give tonight. Let us give abundantly out of a willing and a giving heart. Father, may we be blessed in our giving. May you bless those that give tonight. I pray a prayer over them. And Father, may you just have this this money allow the church to be a good steward and may it be fruitful and multiply the gospel. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 While they're taking up offering, I'd like to sing, but since I can, I won't. But I'm going to bring up Kinsley. Kinsley is with me tonight and Riley. So Riley's not with me, but she showed up. I'm glad she did. But uh, I, I, I didn't do too bad. I got one out of four children here. And she said she wanted to help me preach. And she had this sermon worked up and all this stuff. And as it got closer, the fear of the Lord started getting more and more and more. And so she's like, I don't want to do it. Well, now she's got a partner in crime. So do you want to say something first? Oh, no, she won't say anything, but she does want to do a, a, a dance of the Lord, okay? Dance of the Lord. And she said she wanted to do something up front to proclaim her love for God, so I'm not going to deny her chance to do dance of the Lord. Okay, go ahead. Would you have, what'd your partner do? All right, that's good enough. Thank you. Right. Y'all thought that was spiritual. It was not, but the fact that she got up in front of people and did something, we're working on it, okay? Working on it. I did not teach her that dance move. Must have got that from her mama. I don't know. I don't know. Amen. God's good to me, and I am thankful to be here. Praise the Lord. How, how many of you are just glad to be here tonight? You could be somewhere else, right? All right. Four of you are glad. Can you four be louder? How many of you four that will be real loud are glad to be here tonight? All right. That's better. I like it. Thank you for the praise and worship, the singing. Good job, Abby and the team. Uh, her mom told her to call me. She used to call me when she was growing up. Called me Uncle Benny. I don't know why, but she did. And I remember when she got old enough, and the first time I heard her say, Uncle, even though I'm not her uncle, but we, we, we were, we are, even though the first time she said Uncle Billy instead of Benny, that broke my heart. But she's, she's all right. It's all right. Lord loves her. Lord knows I'm trying. Turn to your neighbor and say, just tell them, get ready. Get ready. Okay. I'm not for sure what you need tonight, but as Abby was 
talking about the Lord is here to meet your needs. If you came uh, because you thought Pastor Jeff was preaching, ha <laughs> ha. If you if you knew I was preaching and you came anyway, glory be to God because uh, good for you. If you didn't know I was preaching and then when she mentioned it, you're like, is it too late to get out? Uh, Sister Janice Breedlove, she says, oh, if you'd have came earlier, you'd have saw me running for the door. Is that what you said? No, she said dancing. She said dancing. She, she heard right when she came that I was going to preach and she said she was going to dance. I thought she said running for the door. But God's good anyway. It don't matter. You can run. Run in church. Run away from me. It's okay. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of John. And I will preach to you tonight what I believe the Lord has laid upon my heart. And I will be as quickly and succinct as I can, which means absolutely nothing. However, I will do my best to, to pinpoint the points that I want to get to you tonight. And I'll try to get you out of here at a fairly decent hour. What time do y'all usually leave? Okay. So what I'm going to say is you can tell me anytime you want. It does not matter. I mean, you just leave when you get good and ready. I'll finish when I get done preaching. Amen. Uh, Book of John. Now, we're going to put up uh, the King James Version. Right? Yeah. Good enough for Jesus. Good enough for me. Y'all do know that that was written after Jesus, right? Just making sure. Uh, we're going to put that. Oh, New King James. He's going to go New King James. I have another version. Um, I asked him if he had King George. He did not. I preach out of King George once in a while. Only because I mess up scripture and I try to relate it to King George. That was a joke, not a funny one. Okay. <laughs> Tough crowd. Um, I have another version that I want to have a couple of scriptures as well. So I'll give you those. So if I look at my phone, I'm not checking the score. Patriots, Chiefs, just kidding. I'm not, not checking it. Um, but John chapter 9, verse 1. And I'm going to read to you this story all the way to verse 34. And you might say, wow, that's a lot. It'll be fast and it'll go back. And then I'm going to touch some verses on that. So if you have a reading plan, you can get your plan in today. Just listen intently. Got it? Okay, John chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while his day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse number six. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is inter interpreted sin. And he went his way, therefore, and washed, and he came seeing. Okay? Big, big news right there. Verse number 8. Get away with it, but headache hard. Verse number 8. I used not to have these, but... Make the Bible so... I mean, I got my Bible is only this big, so that's what happened. All right, just kidding. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was, in fact, blind, said, Is not he, this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, It is like him. But he said, I am he. I can't hardly get through scriptures without. People ask me sometimes, you know, when you preach, you use a lot of jokes. Have you read the scripture before? I mean, have you? if you ever read just to read, I was hearing uh, a message today and he said, you could learn a lot from, we, we put things in one line, like whole history of the life in a one line sentence. Like, yeah, he, uh, he got in a wreck and he died. That's his whole life. Nothing about him. Other. And then Samson, there's a scripture that says he went down to Gaza and looked upon a prostitute. And that's really his whole life. I mean, everything started from there and went downhill, right? And I think about this 
in the fact that they were debating on whether it was him or not. And he says, I am he. You're going to get that in a minute. It'll be all right. It's okay. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. And he said unto me, Go to the pool and wash. And I went and I washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought him to the Pharisees uh, that aforetime was blind. And it was on the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and he opened his eyes. And then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. Again, he said unto them, he put clay into my eyes and I washed and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he hath opened your eyes? And he said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him he had, he, that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that received his sight. And they asked the parents, saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know this is our son and we know that he was blind. What am I talking about? A blind person. Everybody knew it. Something happened. Something changed in his life. Verse 21. But what means he now sees and knows not? Or who hath opened his eyes? We know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. And the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again, I'm already getting tired of reading about him being asked, but then again, they called the man that was blind and said, give God the praise. We know that this man, Jesus, is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I See, mm. yes. I was blind, but now I see. I had a problem, but the Lord brought me out. Y'all's not ready, but we'll get there. It's okay. It's all right. Verse 26, then said they to him again, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered and said, I've told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear it again? Would you also want to be his disciples? Oh, I'm going to touch that verse too. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he came. The man answered and said unto him, why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened my eyes. Y'all have done nothing. He has opened my eyes. Now, we know God here is not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, will he him he heareth. It goes on in verse 34. He says, They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Okay, so I wanted to tell you all this story for this couple of points here. Let's break this down and figure out where you are in life. How does this story apply to my life? First of all, I would title this uh, message, The Blind Bear. Because I told Melissa what I was going to preach about, and she said, the blind bear? I said, no, the blind beggar. She said, the blind bear? Beggar. Blind beggar. But apparently, I slur and said, blind bear. So this is a blind bear message, okay? So I don't care if it's a bear or a beggar or a rich person. We're going to talk about this particular person and how this applies to your life. It does me no good to preach to you any gospel that you can't apply to your life. Now, when I say that, I don't 
tell you that the gospel can. But if I just get up here and I just uh, spew out some words and you're like, oh, that was great, but how does it apply to my life? I've done you no good. When I, when I think that we should preach the Word of God, I think each and every day when we preach and we read the Word of God, it should minister to us. Without a doubt, it should minister to us. And so if we read this story, verse uh, number one, first of all, it says here, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Blind from birth. People often assume they know what you are going through. They know he was blind from birth. They know that he is now of age, that he has been a beggar because he was a blind man. They didn't have any programs for a blind person to, to uh, learn Braille and, and be uh, a great uh, pianist or anything like that or, or you know teach something. He was blind. He was of no value. He had a disability and he was of no value to them. How does this apply to your life? Well, how many of you have went through your life and at some point thought you might have had some type of disability enough that people thought you were worthless? I don't mean that it's a physical disability, that it's a, a handicap of some sort, but the fact that somebody in your life made you feel that you were of no value whatsoever. Here we have a blind man that couldn't work, had to kind of work his way on through. The ADA wasn't around at the time, right? They didn't help him. He was of no value. How many of you have had a moment in your life when you've been of no value? How does this apply to you? This man from the time he was born, people assume they know what you're going through. Oh, I've been through that. I know when my, my dad passed away and blessed everybody that tried, but they say, oh, I know how you feel, I lost my dad. I'm sorry, I'm not being rude. You don't know how I feel. How could you? I feel different than you. Right? I understand the point of what you're trying to say, but the fact that I'm suffering or going through something, I appreciate the concern, but you don't know how I feel. You know how it feels to lose a loved one to you? Yes. But to say that, oh, I know how you feel. No, no, I'm sorry. Thank you for your concern. You don't. What is that to say? We're all different. When I feel of value, you may feel of no value. What I place an emphasis on, you might say, why is he talking about that? When I say you should do this to be closer to God, you're thinking, no, no, no. I do this and I'm closer to God. Here's the point. Whatever you do to get closer to God, I think you should do it. We don't all pray the same way. We don't all worship the same way. We don't all attend the church the same way. Some people like to praise and they're, they're just crazy at it, right? We sung that song and some, some jumped and some didn't. Some jumped just because, uh, man, later we jumped and it shook everybody else and they started jumping. I understand that. Somebody, they spun. I didn't know that was part of it, but he said spin, and it caught me off guard. He said spin. I had to spin. Maybe you're not a spinner. Maybe you're like, Lord won't move me. I ain't going to spin. Be careful what you say. Yes. Next song, you'd be spinning. It won't even be in a song. You're like, why are they spinning? They missed a song. <laughs> then people make fun of you. No, it's just the Lord moving on you. Here, here's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things that we're different at. How many of you can sing? How many wish you could sing? Yeah, 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 yeah. How many of you sing but wish you could? And people have told you we wish you could. That was kind of me. I remember singing long ago, and uh, <clears throat> Melissa put a kibosh on that, and I hung that harp on the willow. And she said to everybody's benefit, but the point of that is, I like to do certain things. How many, how many of you have seen Matthew play the drums? And you're like, oh, he's all right. Uh, I mean, he's good. I'm sorry. Yeah. How many of you thought, oh, I'd like to play drums? Nobody. Well, good. I mean, you don't have any competition. Good. <laughs> Matthew's like, wow. Okay. It's not that hard. Look. Just a beat. It's all good. It's all good. 
Uh, here's the thing. We do things differently. How does it apply to us? Quit assuming you know what other people are going through. Amen. Here the people came along and they're like, oh, we know. Oh, he's blind. What was his life story? We have a blind man. And in fact, later they talked about him begging. What was his story? Nothing of value. His mom and his dad, who had the baby and wished great things upon him, all he turned out to be was a blind beggar. Oh, you mean the blind beggar? No, no. I mean Roland. His name was Roland. I mean, it wasn't. I just made that up. It sounded good. <laughs> Roland. Well, okay. Any Rolands in here? Good. His name was Roland. And his parents knew him as Roland Jehoshaphat Abimelech. And the last name, Smith. That's what they know, knew him as. But nobody else knew him as Roland. They didn't even know his name. The Bible doesn't give him a name. They say, a blind man. Oh, you mean the blind man. Oh, the beggar. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember him. You mean Roland? No. Who? Hey, did you talk to Roland? Uh, who? The blind beggar. Oh, yeah, blind beggar. BB, I call him. Yeah, I talk with him. Yeah, we're tight. He doesn't know you. No, no, I know who he is. I know what he goes through. Oh, poor little thing must have it rough. You don't understand what somebody else is going through. How does this relate to you? How many of you have assumed that you know what somebody else is going through? How many of you have had that assumption on your life? Oh, why are you struggling? Aren't you blessed? Don't you have faith in God? Oh, my. If Melissa and I could write the story of what God has done for us the last uh, years, man, it would be great to get us here. So we, we now live in Oklahoma, of all things. We live in Tuttle. How do we get to Tuttle? It's a long story, and there's a miraculous story to that. But there are still things that we are going through. And you might say, you're all blessed. Don't you look so happy? Thank you. That's what you're supposed to do. Bring joy to the world. Does that mean that everything's rosy? It is if you believe that every rose has its thorn. Now I'm just saying. Y'all shouldn't even know the words. But every rose has its thorn. Y'all's getting on to me for preaching it. Y'all singing it. So. Yes, my life is rosy. Thorns and all. It has its beauty. It has thorns. Roses will wilt at times. That's my life. So when someone says, oh, you're right. your life is rosy. Yeah, it is. With all the problems of cultivating that rose, the beauty that it possesses, yes, they assume they know his struggle. They don't know you've been struggling. They don't know you've been fighting through this thing for a while, having to get used to dealing with your disability or your problem. Let's, let's take it from a disability to a problem. Nobody wants to admit that they have a disability. <coughs> but if you break it down, your non-ability to do something is therefore a dis. Ability. The fact that I can't get over the hump, I am, now again, I'm not talking about a physical or a mental handicap, but I am disabled in my attempt to get over something, and I need God's help. People may think they know what you are going through. Don't let others', others uh, perception of your situation dictate how you overcome it. The blind man from birth, it says here, as he passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Growing up, he didn't go out and play with all the other kids. Why? He was blind. Hey, rolling catch. You think that's me. That's life. Hey, tag, you're it. Ho, oh, ho, fellas, real good. Think about what he had to go through. I, things that you and I take for granted. Guess what he never did? Oh, they posted that. Oh, they posted that. I mean, nobody did because they had phones in biblical times. Sucked you in on that, didn't I? 
Point of that is if they did, he couldn't do it. His ability was limited. Verse number two, and the disciples asked saying, Master, who did sin, the man or his parents, that he was born blind? Isn't it just like people? You're going through something, so naturally it's your fault. Wow, nobody's ever went through anything. I'm not kidding you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. If, if you'll listen, you know what? You're feeling right. If you'll go back and listen, you'll be amen and me a lot more later. People will assume they know what you're going through. And then when you're going through something, they'll say, Ah, oh, what'd you do? What, what'd you do? Oh, you're having struggles? What'd you do? Why are we so judgmental? I'm going to stay up here and whew, get rough. Oh my. <laughs> I didn't want to put it out there because of McDonald's cup. And I didn't want to tell the thing. It wasn't in a McDonald's cup. See? But I didn't want water. In my mind. I'll put it down there by the prayer cloth. It's all holy. Prayer <laughs> cloth and tea. Manna from heaven. What, what you are going through. People will assume it's your fault. Hmm. Well, should have been better. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, oh, so sad what they do. We as a church are the worst on our own kind. Man, pastor said I could preach. He didn't tell me. He didn't put any limitations on what I could say. He's not here, so I don't have to answer to him. I'm loving it. Verse 3, Jesus just answered. He says, neither this man sinned nor his parents. Basically, he said in there, it's not in the scripture that you read, but another version said, uh, y'all are horrible. Neither one sinned. His parents didn't sin. He didn't sin. This thing has been done. This happened. You mean, God, I'm going through a situation. Oh, Melissa. Going through a situation, why? So God can have glory. This thing happened so the power of God could be seen in him. You think it's a trouble and a trial and a disability, and God's ready to use that, but we're so inundated by the negativity of the people around us and the people saying it's our fault that we can't see the good in our trouble and our limitation that God wants to do something great. It's through the bad things that make it look greater that God gets his glory. You might be like, ah, God, I don't want to be the bad thing. I want to be the great thing. But when you're the great thing, it doesn't always work that way. You can't always have the rose petal without the, the growth and the thorns and the wilting. You, you can't always have the beauty without the work. I was talking to my son Reagan today, and he's like, man, I'm working on that. I, I want to dunk the basketball. And I said, okay, great. I've got a program I'll get you on. And he says, oh, is that program you sent Isaac? Yeah, I sent him on a text. He said, it's hard. Yeah. He said, man, that's tough. And I said, things that you want don't always come easy. You want to be good in basketball. You want to rise above the rim, but you don't want to work for it. We want the reward without the work. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm kind of preaching to myself. So I, I ain't getting that. I'm going to watch it later and say, wow, that's, that's harmful to you, uh, Billy. You need to... Pick that up. Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 and 20. We sometimes go through something. You're going through something, so naturally it's your fault. And Genesis 50, 19 says, Joseph, Joseph went through something. His brother sold him into slavery, beat him and sold him. If you've ever read the story of Joseph, he said to them, to his brothers, when he finally came back, he said, hey, don't be afraid. I'm in the place of God. Before we go to the next verse, listen to this. He says, don't be afraid. I'm in the place of God. What you did was horrible. If I relied on your spirituality, 
I would still be in a, in a ditch, beaten, in prison, all of this stuff. But he said this, don't be afraid. Not because of what you've done. You said it was my fault. All I told you was a dream. Well, we didn't like what you told us. I told you that God was going to work in my life. Well, we didn't like it. So we tried to destroy you. Through all of that, guess Joseph said, I am I in the place of God. I'm right where I need to be. It took a while for me to get here. I didn't think I was wrong. But seeing everything I saw got me to the right place. And then verse number 20, he said, but as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people. You meant it for evil. People always want to discuss what you're going through. And they usually want to say it's your fault. Who sinned, him or his parents? Neither one. <clears throat> Somebody's wrong for this. He's blind. What the devil meant for evil. God meant it for good. What do you mean I have to go through some things? <laughs> yes, you have to go through some things. But I thought it would be easy. Uh, Michael, Jordan, LeBron James, I mean, they, them guys didn't just say, you know what, I think I'll take up basketball, and tomorrow they're good. Tom Brady, you can love him or hate him, but he didn't just start playing last week and says, oh, I hope I win a Super Bowl. I mean, some people worked on some stuff. Listen, I knew your pastor Jeff when he first preached. <coughs> <laughs> it's tape, so I ain't saying nothing. But <laughs> Man. Brother Turner said he couldn't preach his way out of a paper sack. I don't really know what that means, but <laughs> Brother Turner said that. Uh, so there's some things that you're going through and some things that you're going to have to go through to come out on the other side. Amen. How does this apply to me? I don't know. Maybe the Bible should apply to me. Verse number, verse number eight. Uh, I went to, and I was using my phone. <laughs> you know what? To scroll up on your phone, you don't have to. <laughs> Let me just turn a page. Just to go. Yeah, I got it verse number eight. This technology killing me. His neighbors, verse number eight, his neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar, beggar asked each other, isn't this a man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was and others said no. He just looks like him. About to die. Okay. How do you know that? Because of red light red. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That way you'll know. Is there a time limit on it? Did I reach my time? <laughs> that red light comes on and you quit preaching. Okay. Wow. 15 minutes. He set the timer. All right. Verse number eight. Uh, his neighbors and others said, hey, is this the one? And some said he was. Others said, no, he just looks like him. This is New Living Translation. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the same one. He says, yes, I am he. It's me. I don't know if you're the one. I am. I was blind. And now I could see. He, wait, 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 wait. I know we made fun of you. Aren't you rolling that we used to throw the ball at and couldn't catch the ball? Aren't you rolling that you were always in on hide and seek? That would be bad, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, isn't that, aren't you the one? And now they're questioning whether he was the one or not. And he says, no, 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 it's me. Isn't it just like people questioning now if it was really him? They used to make fun of his situation. Now they question if it was even 
real. He said, no, 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 it's me. I've been through the struggle. I've been through the pain. I've been through the, the times of trouble. And I finally get a miracle. And the people that's supposed to be with me are the ones saying, oh, he wasn't blind to begin with. What do you think I've been doing for the last 18 years? Pretending? Oh, I got bruises all over me. I've been made fun of and ridiculed all my life. And you think I was pretending? You think I was just going through the motions that it wasn't really me? It's me. I once was blind and now I see. Instead of being happy for me, you want to question the very thing that happens to me. Lord forbid somebody get blessed around this place because somebody's going to take, try to tear you down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I got blessed. Oh, well, why'd they get blessed? I, the Lord decided to bless them? What'd they do? Uh, serve the Lord? Well, I serve the Lord. Lord, don't bless me. Probably because you got a horrible attitude. My kids come to me and they're like, oh, can't stand when you do that. Oh, you irritate me. Can I have $20? No! <laughs> we have a Heavenly Father. Kinsley comes up. She says, Hi, Dad. Will you hold me? Yeah. Can I give you a kiss? Yeah. Will you snuggle with me? Yeah. I love you, Daddy. Oh, okay. Here, baby. Here's $100. <laughs> I didn't need it. I don't, here's 200, baby. You, just, oh. you, you think the Lord as our Father, Abba Father, is going to continually bless somebody in disobedience? Now, I'm not telling you that you have to do the good things. She didn't do anything. She didn't ask for money. She didn't expect it. But because she loved me, I will pour my blessings out upon her because she loved me. If we love God and He starts blessing us, and then others be like, how oh, they get blessed? Because uh, I read Scripture every day? No, because I love God. Well, God, God will bless you. Don't get me wrong. But man, isn't it easier as a parent? I mean, can we just talk about this? Since I only have one child here, that she's my favorite? Can we, is that okay? Can we just be real? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, them boys, them boys drive me bananas at times. Can we just, is that not okay? Is that apparently not okay here in Seminole? In Tuttle, you can just, you know, pick a favorite child, uh, but not in Seminole, I guess. I mean, I love the boys, but they get on my nerves sometimes. Now, she does too, but the point of that is, isn't it, isn't it right sometimes that the, the Lord will just bless somebody? Why are we to question who He blesses? Instead, we're too worried about, well, they got something and I didn't. Okay, be glad for them. Ooh, nothing good ever happens to me. Well, Eeyore probably is because of your attitude. Oh, about John, is it hot in here? It's just me. Wow. I'm sweating. Oof. I'll be all right. Verse, let's skip down to verse 16. Because we're getting to the end. Red, it's blinking. What's that mean? Oh, I just checked. It. Verse 16. I thought maybe it was going to you know, go off or something. Verse 16. Some of the Pharisees says, This man Jesus is not from God, he is, for He is working on the Sabbath. Now that's funny. Thank you. If you're, if you're not hot yet, just come up on the stage, okay? Join me. It, it'll be real quick. Some of the Pharisees said, This man Jesus is not from God, for he is working on the Sabbath. I don't know what you think a man of God should be working. Sabbath would be a pretty good day, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be like Pastor Jeff coming and says, Hey, hey, I'm not preaching today. It's a Sabbath. Now I know culturally the Sabbath don't... don't you don't have to send me an email about, you know, theology. If you want to, just send it to pastorjeff at gmail.com. So you don't have to send me emails and, and debate with me theology. I know the Sabbath and the Jewish custom, all that. I understand. But wouldn't you want somebody working on the Sabbath? Imagine we, we consider 
we consider Sunday as you know our Sabbath, our holy day. We come to church. You're here today because Sunday you don't show up to worship on Monday night because y'all have service on Monday night. Yeah. No. Okay. Good. Y'all have not good, but good that I didn't mess up. Y'all have service on Sunday. Imagine him coming and said, "Hey, you know what? Not preaching today. It's Sunday." Well, that don't make sense, but. <coughs> When are you planning on preaching? I don't know, Thursday. We don't have service on Thursday. Y'all lost out. <laughs> when do you want him to work? I mean, Lord knows pastor only works on Sunday. We all know that, right? <laughs> I mean, we all know. You only work. I pastored for eight years. I can say all this stuff. I don't pastor now, so it's great. Pastor only works on Sunday, usually for two hours in the morning. I mean, he's got an easy life. Just uh, for instance, your pastor was talking to me last night, and it was 11.30. Apparently, I don't have a bedtime either. And we were talking over some things. And he says, I've got to go because I've got to do some things. He was at a store getting some things for today. But he probably only works on Sunday. We assume we know what other people are going through. We assume we know what other people, oh, well, he, I know, I understand you're going through that. I mean, you'll get over it, those type of things. Verse 16 right here tells us that they got on to Jesus because he was working on the Sabbath. Others said, but how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. How many times have people tried to say negative things about your miracle? Come on. What about you're overcoming something? Right. Oh, I hope it lasts. Probably won't. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Man, am I preaching to you, at you, or over you? I'm just saying, if you don't get preached to sometimes, if you don't get preached at sometimes, I'll say some stuff and wish I wrote my own notes. When I say I usually don't have notes, so I have to go back later and say, what did I say? I mean, it's awesome. Why? Because God will hit you with some things, and he will allow you to see. This is, I mean, I told Melissa, I said, hey, I'm excited about preaching tonight. So I've been preached for since October, I think, because I, I left. And I actually wrote notes, and you know what her comment was? Because she's ever supportive. I don't know why you won't use them, <laughs> which is true, but I've been using them tonight. And then she says, and you're going to preach. what she say? How long? Hour? Oh, she's silent. Wow. She, hour and a half. You're going to preach? Hour and a half. I say, oh, no, no, no. No, hour and 20. I'll be out of here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I do have notes, and I'm writing them down because I want you to know what God is telling you. People will say negative things about your miracles. You're overcoming your faith. They try to make excuses why this couldn't possibly happen to you. They're not good enough for God to bless. They're not spiritual enough for God to rain down His glory. Yeah. Come on. Wow, uh, Abby's up there. Who thinks she's good enough to sing? <coughs> um, are y'all? Do y'all have a line of people waiting to lead worship? <coughs> oh, good. I'm just making sure y'all know. So, first of all, I thought she did great. Second of all, if you don't have a line of people waiting, waiting to go next, who do you want up there? She was in tune with what the Lord was leading, and she even said, hey, we're going to sing another song. She did make a mistake and say, real quick, don't, don't ever apologize for the time the Lord's given you. I mean, I, I'll tell you that right now. You... For, for another moment, we're going to sing this. Or I feel the Lord leading me this way. Man, you take that. You just take it and run with it. Don't ever apologize for taking time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Some will question why it can happen. Verse 9, 19, as we continue going, we're almost to the end. We're going to wrap all this up. Verse 19, they asked him, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he see? Not believing the man, after they asked him three times, they asked his parents. People around you, let's bring up 1 Corinthians 15. People around you 
Are they supporting you or disappointing you? 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Another version of that says that... Um, uh, says something. If I could remember it, it'd be great. says character. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, uh, don't be fooled by those who say such things for bad company corrupts good character. You may be a person of integrity, but if you're hanging around the bad people, yeah. that starts to diminish. You are who you run with. Yeah. 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 I'm going to let that settle for a second. You are who you run with. Amen. Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a thief. Yeah, but there's four bank robbers sitting by you. And you hang out with them all the time. They're planning on robbing a bank. They've robbed three banks before, but you don't have a part of it. Uh, no. I know that's uh that's a way out there, right? We would never sit with four bank robbers. Everybody knows you don't sit with more than three because it draws a crowd. <laughs> just, just Make sure you're still just Sometimes you get involved in some things. Verse 24. Verse 24. So for the second time they called in the man who had been blind and told him, God should give the glory for this because we know this man Jesus is a sinner. Again, questioning the validity of his miracle. And that's when verse 25 says, I don't know whether he's a sinner. Man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. Stand up for your miracle. Amen. Don't apologize for what God is doing in your life. If he's seeing you through, man, celebrate that. Amen. Right? Amen. If he's seeing you through a situation, well, I don't believe he's seeing you through. I don't care. I was raised in this church. And I remember coming down all the time to an altar when I was, I got saved when I was uh, 12. Going on 13, I got saved right here. I would come down to the altar every service. And uh, my dad told me later that people started questioning, why does he keep going to the altar? Has he not got saved yet? Because I had some wonderful older spiritual people that really supported me. Why does he keep going to the altar? When are you going to get saved? Uh, my dad said he goes to the altar because he knows where that's where he finds God. What's he going for? My dad's like, I don't know. When he gets what he needs, maybe he'll quit going. Thank God I've never quit going. I will never get to where I need to be with God. It is a continual process. The first time I'm like, I don't need the altar. I'm there. I've arrived. Is the first time I realize how far back I am. Don't give up. Stand up for your miracle. How many of you are on the brink of a miracle? And you're about ready to give up. You're like, I can't take it. I can't take it. But God's like, just keep going. Keep keep swimming. Keep swimming. Right? We got to keep swimming. We got to keep going. It's a continual effort. Verse number 27. Look, the man exclaimed, I told you once. Did you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? I love it. He answered the way I would answer, sarcastically. You keep talking about Jesus, you must want to be his disciples. What? How about you stand up for your miracle and tell people where you got what you got? Right. Only because of God, I'm able to get where I'm going. Amen. Amen. I've said this before in this church, but there's people in here that I don't know, and I'll tell you again. When I was in first and second grade, I think in the third, I can't remember, I tried to put it past um, I was in speech class because I could not say R's, right? And I, I had trouble with C-H. No clue what I called church. I mean, C-H, you know, R, C-H. I probably call it Oop. I'll go Oop. I don't know. It's the only words, the only letters I can say. I don't know that to be true. I just, but anyway, I was in speech class. Now, for those of you, contrary to popular opinion, I'm very smart. <clears throat> smart. I stopped it right there, right? I'm very smart. And uh, graduated 
uh, valedictorian. Yes. How many people is in class? Don't matter. Number one is number one. <laughs> okay. Number one is number one. Okay. Okay. Uh, Miss Naomi Davis isn't here to tell me anything. That's Naomi, and I call her Davis because long joke. Ask her about it; she'll tell you her slighted story. Uh, but anyway, I was smart in grade school. However, I went to speech class because I couldn't say certain words, and I would stumble over them. And my friends uh, would help me out, encourage me when I'd go to speech class. They'd be like. Hey, there goes Billy to dumb class. <laughs> Such support. Hey, there goes Dummy. Can't talk. That was me growing up. Now, those of you who do, do not remember um, my dad before he ever came to church, he stuttered. He wouldn't talk in front of people. I mean, people knew him as preaching, but before he got saved and started preaching, he would turn down jobs because he didn't want to talk in front of people. He would say words. I mean, he would he would say words when he was growing up that nobody understood. I mean, it just, he had trouble, right? And so here I come along, and I have trouble. And I think, oh, man. And you know, I, I speak literally for a living now. And I'm in front of people. I've run companies. I've done all of this. My best class in college was a speech class. I mean, I aced it, and the professor was like, wow. He said, you can use notes. I'm like, I don't need notes. And I get up and give my speech. You know, I just, God had blessed me, but it wasn't without a struggle. What the devil meant for evil. God said, hey, if you work through it, you'll be okay. It's hard for me to listen to other people speak because sometimes I critique them, and it drives me crazy because I critique them. Instead of listening, because I think, okay, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say, you know, after every sentence, you know. That'd be horrible, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. The point of that is. So I critique others so that I can get better. I don't tell them about it. I don't go up to them and say, hey, you're horrible. I just be like, oh, okay, I think I have that. I think I do that. Let me get better. So if you heard me when I first preached, <laughs> When I was young, a teenager in this church, I remember people saying, oh, he'll get up there. And usually young people will preach like three minutes, five minutes. And I was like 25 minutes ago, and I'm pretty sure Brother Turner said, okay, wrap it up. And I mean, I was excited. When I get to talk about God, it's exciting to me. But I, it wasn't without struggle. I still have some trouble with a uh, word. Really, I only have trouble with one word, and it's probably the most difficult word in the English language, so it's tough. R-U-R-A-L. Now, I'm going to say, you're thinking, oh, I know what that is. But you know, yeah. <coughs> you know. R-R-2, box 225. <laughs> That's what we got. point of that is, you know, I struggle I struggled with things going through, but I had to overcome. But that didn't keep people from making fun of me because I had a quote-unquote disability. Oh, there goes dummy going to his class, don't know how to talk. Wow, support like that, right? We get here in the blind man, what do you think he went through? He finally says, hey, do you want to be like Jesus? Verse 29, he goes through and they said, they cursed him and said, are his disciples, you are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. If people can't explain it or justify it in their minds, even though it's your situation or miracle, they will oftentimes curse you for the very blessing you worked yourself through. People can't explain it. They can't detail it. They'll curse you for your miracle. Where have we got in a society when we don't rejoice with with others about their Amen. blessings, right? Yeah. How many of you have known somebody that's gotten blessed and you'd be like, oh, I'm happy for that. Right? How many of you know other people? I mean, y'all don't do it, but you know other people? Yeah. We know other people like that, right? Oh, here they go, another blessing. Why is that? 
You don't know what they went through. You don't know. You don't know that they had to struggle through things. You just assume everything is great with them, and the next thing you know, they're getting blessed. Mm. You have to understand that until you go through the things they go through, and maybe you should quit concentrating on them, start concentrating on your own life. If they weren't, if they weren't so busy picking on Roland, maybe they would have been more time in the Word, getting closer to God. Maybe. You ever thought about Goliath? How he <coughs> became Goliath? Oh, he's bigger than everybody and started bullying. What if a youth pastor reached out to him and turned him for the Word of God and turned him to a, a Christian? How would David and Goliath's story be then? Instead of being the monster and the Philistine, instead of being the enemy, what if somebody reached out to him? Wouldn't you think Goliath would have been a pretty good testimony? Hi, I'm Goliath. I can't crush you. Instead, I'd rather you get saved. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? Hey, give your life to God, or I will crush you. I mean, Goliath crushed everybody, right? I mean, he was huge, right? Hey, bear hug. Oh, I got his ankle. I mean, <laughs> think about it, right? Think about him on the youth basketball team. Oh, my. Get that out of here. I mean, it would be awesome. Goliath was a Christian. Why wasn't he? He was raised different. Somebody didn't reach out to him. Somebody looked at him. I mean, I don't have the answer. I'm just asking you, why, why wasn't he a Christian? Well, he's in a different culture, so we can't reach across barriers. Oh, he was raised different. He wasn't raised in a godly home. I believe you have kids coming in on Wednesday, a lot of unchurched kids, unchurched families. And How many of times have you, and I'm just speaking here because I don't know, I don't attend this church, and I may not get invited back, so I can say what I want. How many of you get the kids here and they're unchurched and unruly, and you're like, oh, them kids drive me crazy. Maybe they do drive you crazy, but maybe you're the one that's got the problem. They just want Jesus. They want somebody to love them. Well, they don't even listen. Maybe it's not about listening to God. Maybe it's just having somebody on the pew with them that actually put their hand around them and show them love because they may not get that at home. Maybe it's not that they can sit down and be quiet and act right. You need to act right in church. What does acting right in church mean? We're Pentecostal. I thought we were supposed to be wild and crazy. We're hanging from the chandeliers and we're running. Woo -hoo! And we said, sit down. We're Baptists. I'm kidding. <laughs> Lord loves Baptists. But sit down. We're Presbyterian. <laughs> I say that, I guess. No, no. Be excited. No, calm down. No, be excited. No wonder they're bipolar. The church has made them that way. I'm just kidding. They're not bipolar. And we don't make them that way. Sit down. Shut up. Praise the Hey, lift your hands and raise. Uh, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Sit down. Lift your, I'm confused. Sometimes we get that way. Others will dictate how we act. There's no right or wrong way to act in a church. How many of you like raising your hands when you praise the Lord, when you worship? How many of you are more like a too cool for school worshiper? Mm, mm, mm. I mean, you're getting going, but ain't nobody going to see you. How many of you are, you know, received? You're a receiver. Right? I'm not, uh, what the comedian, I'm not doing that, right? We literally were in the church the other day and saw... A girl, I saw her, and she was worshiping God, and the Lord loved her, and it, it distracted me, and that was my fault. She was worshiping God, and she was doing great. But she, instead of raising her hand, she didn't have her hand out. She had her hands back, like far back. Like, she had to take off. And it was distracting to me because I was trying to figure out what she was doing. She didn't have them raised up to God. She just, like, she had to take off, and I... I found in that moment I was more concerned with what she was doing than my worship with God. Who had the problem? It was me. I am he. 
who had the problem. I am he. Because she's about to take off. Man, she, she was praising God. She didn't care what anybody said. But I had a problem. Not so much that I just lost my love for God, but the fact that I didn't get in worship as much as I should have because I was too busy wondering, what is she doing? I've never seen worship like that. Maybe your arm behind, you want to touch, oh, Lord. She was on the front row. Maybe she was just blessing him. Lord, bless all those people. They don't get it. Lord, I mean, I, I don't know. It was my problem. You don't know what other people are going through. You don't understand the possibility that they need God. You don't understand that their miracle is right there. But you're hindering that. Amen? All right, let's finish up. Verse 30 through 34, when we finish this, uh, I'm going to read to you this uh, New Living Translation. He says, why? That's very strange. They said, hey, you don't, this, this man, he doesn't know what he's doing. And Roland said, that's very strange. The man replied, he healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You were born a total sinner, they said. They answered. And you are trying to teach us, and they threw him out. Why did they throw him out? They were mad. Why? Because he called them out on something. It has to be a certain way. If you're going to worship God, you have got to have 90 degree, straight up. And if you get real excited, just up, but bring it right back down. That's how you worship God. No. We're worshiping God. Let me know that he, he worships like this. Something. And I know that because y'all saw... I had to keep scooting because he was going out and he was standing here. And so I thought he was going to pray for me. I almost, he was feeling it. I almost went, oh, touch me, touch me. But I did because I thought it might have hurt him. But we, we can worship however you want. Maybe you don't want to raise your hands. Maybe you want to bow your head. Oh, bow your head, close your eyes. Are you the one when they say, bow your head, close your eyes? And you? What are you looking at? <coughs> Be respectful for the pastor. Be reverent to God. Nothing, nobody's going to come by and say, duck, duck, goose. I mean, just <laughs> close your eyes. Quit looking around. Bow your head, close your eyes. Oh, okay. I'm a rebel. No, you're rebellious. We've got to know that other people are going through things. You may be the one that causes somebody to miss out. Because of why? Your hatefulness? Your mean-spiritedness? Well, I'm not mean-spirited. I'll fight you for telling me this. Hello, you proved my point. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little fiery because I'm redheaded. Don't excuse, right? right? People say that redheads are fiery. That's an excuse. I mean, I've known people with other color hair be just as fiery. And they can't use the excuse. You know what they say? I'm Irish. <laughs> oh, top of the morning to you. We get Irish. I'm like, you're from Muskogee. No, I'm all Irish. <laughs> no, you're just mean. Sometimes you can just be mean. Well, I was raised that way. Be better. Amen. Right? Be better. Be better than you're raising. <laughs> You don't know the struggle I've been through. I, I don't need to know. Please don't write it on Facebook. I don't need to know that either. Just be better. We need to be better for others. Amen? Yeah, yeah. The blind beggar had a, had a problem. He had a miracle happen in his life. So many people try to tear him down. How is it that you get a miracle and somebody wants to tear you down? Have you ever felt bad for just having a miracle in your life? Have you ever felt bad? I'm going to give you, my mom shook her head no, however, I'm going to call her out on that. She may not know, but it is to do with her, because her and my dad were a team. So my dad, uh, I'm going to say this, because he can't dispute it. 
uh, right now, and then later we get to heaven, and he'd be like, I told you. <laughs> These syllables bang, kind of like, yeah, I told you to. So um, he got a, he got a, a blessing when they were in Alaska, my dad had some physical problems, and he had a doctor uh, that he would go see, and they loved this doctor, and, and she told him that he will never pay, as long as he came to see her from here on out, um, he will never pay a bill at her office. Not a copay, not a bill, a miracle. It was a blessing of the Lord, a miracle, because if you know my dad, you know, he had a lot of medical problems, so he would see her. Sometimes they would go to this particular doctor who drove me bananas because they would have a appointment at two, and at three she would call and say, hey, don't come till six, I'm still with patients. She had the same amount of patience, but she talked. Like when, I think my mom and dad went to her and just talked to her for an hour. Like, hey, how's life? How you doing? I don't know. They said no. Anyway, so he would go and he said, she said, we'll never owe a bill again. Isn't that a miracle? If you could just have free medical care, basically, through this doc for the entirety of your life, as long as you're here. And I'm like, wow. And I remember having this conversation. And I understood what he said, but it, it irritated me. Even to this day, I said, Dad, that's amazing. I said, you got to testify about that. you got to give God glory. And he says, oh, I've been thanking God and I've been praising God. But he said, it's difficult as a pastor. You really can't say much about it. And I understand that at first. And we had this conversation and he said, because people get jealous of your blessings. And as a pastor, even people in the church would get jealous of the blessings and say, Oh, well, I don't have to give. I don't have to support the church. I don't have, they're being blessed anyway. He didn't say in the negative way that he can or he wouldn't. He, he really enlightened me on sometimes how ministry can be. I've been ministering for a lot, a lot of years, and I can tell you a ton of stories, right? But boy, that hit me. And I thought, the people you're trying to shepherd that should have your support are sometimes the one that try to tear you down. Isn't that a sad state of where we could be? Now, I'm not saying that people could. He was just leery of it. He was weary that there was some people that would try to use that against them. He still gave God praise for what, what the blessing was, but it opened my eyes about what you can do. What you can't do. And I try to tell myself, I understand that. And now I try to figure out, I don't care anymore. You know, you have to get to that point where you just don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You don't like me. I, you are missing out because I'm a great guy. <laughs> well, that's why I don't like you. Okay. I did have one, one minister. I can't remember. We had to ask my mom what his name is. I had one minister came to me and he was mad. He's mad at me. I think I said five words to him. He says, I need to wash your feet. And I was like, well, that was weird, first of all. Because we don't always do that. And I said, you do? And he said, yeah, I just have odd against you. And I said, oh, why? I'm sorry. He said, well, you're so, uh, what did he say? What did he say, Melissa? You're uh, mean. No. Oh, you're so arrogant. I can't even stand you. And I'm like, I've never had a conversation with you, but okay. And I let him wash my feet. I asked for a pedicure, but then he said, this is the very reason. I'm kidding. I didn't ask for a pedicure. That would have been too much. But the point of that is he had to come and I let him and I was very humble by it. But I didn't know what to say. Sometimes people just make up stuff about you. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm confident in God, but don't think I'm confident in myself not to do it without God. Only by God am I able to get up here and speak. Yeah. Only by God are we blessed. Amen. If, if God's doing something in your life, then man, push it out there. Proclaim it. Yeah. Tell people about your blessings. And if people are, are downtrodden on you and they are, they are really getting on to you about your blessings, just enjoy the presence of God and know that Bad company can corrupt good character. Maybe you should find new company. Yeah, but they're my sister. Maybe you should not hang out with your sister as much until she get right with the Lord. Oh, but you don't know that these are the only friends I got. Make new friends. 
I mean, if the front row doesn't know the back row, that's a friend you can make, right? If the third row, middle, doesn't know the seventh row right, and I tricked you because you don't know if it's my right or your right, then be, the third row should be friends with the seventh row right and left. Well, I don't want to miss out. I'll be friends with both. It's too many friends. You've got to have support, right? Praise the Lord. Stand with me tonight. We're going to end this.